The Michigan Wolverines are coming off a historic season, one that, albeit, ended in a sour way in the Fiesta Bowl with a 45-51 loss to TCU, who went on to lose 7-65 to Georgia. I still can't believe that bloodbath happened, which is why I'm mentioning it. But anyway, back to the topic, the Wolverines still overall had a successful year. They won 13 games for the first time ever in program history. They won the Big Ten again, facing an arguably tougher opponent when it came to matching up with Michigan compared to last year's Iowa team. They had a winning record against top 10 teams this season, teams that both at the time were ranked in the top 10 and finished in the top 10. Penn State, Ohio State, and TCU all finished in the top 10. Michigan beat Penn State and Ohio State, but lost again, unfortunately, to the Texas Christian Horned Frogs in the Fiesta Bowl. Luckily for Michigan, Sideris Paribus, all things remaining constant, and that, of course, is a notion to Jim Harbaugh, supposedly going off to the NFL, which I'll address in a few seconds, but Michigan's best players, or some of their best players, and in fact, a lot of their best players, are coming back, and they will be returning for the 2023 season. Just want to touch on Jim Harbaugh for a few seconds. I doubt he's going to the NFL. Every year he has been at Michigan, these rumors happen. And how many have carried any weight to them or fallen through? or gotten past the initial interview stage? None. None. I'll believe it when I see it, like what Mike Valenti said yesterday when I was listening on 97 won the ticket. I'll believe it when I see it. I think he's staying. In fact, the staff from 2022, most of it will probably carry over to 2023. There won't be the same staff attrition like there was after 2021. And Michigan, overall, there's going to be some new faces, but... There's going to overall be a lot of the same faces, just improved with another year of experience. And Michigan is using the portal. They have seven portal commits. Last year, they only had three. I imagine Michigan's going to at least get another handful of guys in the transfer portal. But we will see. It sounds like they've already gotten a lot of what they wanted. They got a tight end. They got a few offensive linemen. And they got a linebacker the best linebacker in the portal, according to 24-7 Sports, and Ernest Hausman from Nebraska, who was a beast there. But speaking of two beasts, the beasts that I want to focus on today are Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards. These freak athletes are returning, both after having fantastic career-high campaigns in 2022. Both of these players have NFL potential. Donovan Edwards is obviously the back when you look at just his build, his top-end speed, his receiver status. If there is to be a unicorn on this team next year, it will be Donovan Edwards. Maybe it could be Blake Corum. I'd say that he would be next in line. But Edwards, 6'1", 204 pounds, the way he runs his routes makes him look like a monster big receiver. And his top-end speed is really, it's, it's special. It is what it is. There's a reason he averages 7.1 yards per carry. And there's a reason that when the opposing defense blitzes and they don't tackle him after, you know, he gets three yards past the line of scrimmage, he's gone off to the end zone. He had a long of 54 against TCU, 60 against Purdue, 85 against Ohio State, and 67 against Rutgers. He can fly. The only thing Blake Corum has on him is the low center of gravity and the power. Ironically, really, when Hassan Haskins left, Blake Corum went into the Hassan Haskins category. Edwards went into where Blake Corum was when Haskins was there in 2021. Except this duo is much better than the 2021 duo, and I think when they play again in 2023, we'll look at them and say, well, they're, they're better than the 2022 duo, even though they're the same guys. 
because they'll have another preseason of work, winter workouts, spring workouts, summer workouts, that whole deal. They'll have spring, summer, fall practices. There'll be a spring game where we will get to see how they fare against their own you know, comrades and teammates on the other side of the ball. And we'll eventually get to see how they do in the actual season in fall of 2023. And with what I think is going to be some superior staff continuity, with a surprising amount of O-line production returning, and Michigan using the portal to get offensive linemen, Ladarius Henderson, Miles Hinton, Drake Nugent, for example, I think that this run game is set up to have success. And here's the crazy part of it. Both of these running backs are elite. And both of these running backs were among the nation's best running backs in 2022, despite not being fully healthy. Corum only played in 11 games. Donovan Edwards, he played in, he played in, I think, like maybe like 11, maybe less. He, they played in a similar number of games. The difference was Corum got the majority of the carries. He was running back number one obviously, and Donovan Edwards, with that higher ceiling, was the one who showed up in the bigger games. He had more total yards and more explosive carries and longer runs than Corum did against Penn State, for example. It probably would have been the same thing against Ohio State. I Just from Corum's play style, I wouldn't see him averaging 10 yards per carry, even fully healthy, against Ohio State nor 7.4 against Purdue, and probably not 5.2 or maybe around 5.2 against TCU. Blake Corum is the more consistent, fall forward, 50, you know, 50 carries per game type of running back compared to Edwards. And Corum still has high top end speed. He's still shifty. I mean, listen, Blake Corum isn't a power back. He's a well-balanced running back. And then Donovan Edwards is, you have some receiver in there, you have that high ceiling, and it it really is just phenomenal. And again, both of them return. Muhammad Ibrahim doesn't. Chase Brown doesn't. Bijan Robinson doesn't. Deuce Vaughn, he's gone to the NFL. Israel Abinakanda, off to the NFL. Same with Keandre Miller. Same with, I think, Zach Charbonnet, if I'm not mistaken. Braylon Allen returns in conference. Same with Robin Hemby and Nicholas Singleton. And Will Shipley outside of conference returns. Um, Quinshawn Judkins returns. Jace McClellan from Alabama returns. Zach Evans has gone to the NFL. I think Jameer Gibbs is off to the NFL, I'm pretty sure. Devin Mockaby from Purdue will return. He just got a scholarship. A lot of the nation's better running backs, I mean, This was a stacked, stacked running back class, not just in the Big Ten, but nationally. A lot of them are gone. Blake Corum was viewed by some as the nation's best running back, and he returns with the Doak Walker Award, Bijan Robinson gone, and the other competitor for that award, Chase Brown, also gone. And Donovan Edwards, much better in 2022 than he was in 2021, With Mike Hart coaching him and Corum, I imagine that Edwards will take a very big leap in the 2023 preseason, and Corum will take a leap as well. This running back room, I said in like the summer of 2022 that it was the best in the nation, and that if it wasn't the best in the nation, Corum and Edwards were certainly the nation's best duo. That was a prediction that aged very well. I've had, of of course, as you all know, some other predictions that have aged fairly poorly. The one about Michigan's running back room didn't. And there is a very early prediction that I do have for 2023. And that is, you know, repeating what I thought for 2022, that this will once again be the nation's number one running back duo. I also, though, have a proposal a proposal. It's not a prediction of mine. I'd have to think about it more, and I would be inclined to not agree with it right now because it would be very challenging, given that there are multiple starting running backs. 
there were multiple great starting running backs in the country. I do think that Michigan's running back room, just because of how good these two are, will be the best. You know, CJ Stokes is going to get a year of development and he's going to double his collegiate experience. And that with Edwards and Corum will be, that will be a lot of depth and a lot of great level play. However, the, um, the thought that I had, something to shoot out there and something that I want you guys to think about. And again, I'm a Michigan fan. I'm a Big Ten fan. I'm just shooting this out here. I'm not giving a prediction because, listen, Braylon Allen exists. Nicholas Singleton exists. You know, Singleton's a freak like Edwards, except I would argue that Edwards better receiver and Singleton is probably just a better pure running back. And my evidence for that would be the fact that Penn State had a wildly inferior offensive line to Michigan's, despite being one of the better offensive lines in the country. But at the same time, Nicholas Singleton was healthy for the entire year. Donovan Edwards wasn't. But, you know, Chase McClellan exists at Alabama. Bucky Irving at Oregon. Relique Brown. That's an impressive running back. Recruited very highly out of high school. Plays well. Explosive. Him at USC could do some damage. And there are others, too, who I have not even mentioned yet. But what I want to throw out there is are these or can these be the top two running backs in the nation? Can Corum be the number one running back in the nation and his backup and Donovan Edwards, is he the second best? Could it even be switched? Could you see a more even amount of carries being given as Edwards' floor continues to be raised and has his seemingly limitless ceiling is tapped? And that's a question that I have for the chat. Like, comment your thoughts down below. Do you think that these two could be the top two running backs in the nation? Do you think that th just asking this question, do you think it's insane? Do you think that it's plausible? I mean, tell me what you think down in the comments below. I will tell you this. From the standpoint that both of these guys, Corm and Edwards, did have some health problems, from the standpoint that the probability that the nation's two best running backs would be in the same room, I am most in all likelihood going to say that no, that isn't the case. And I will believe it when I see it. But the reason I ask this question is I think that even though it isn't likely, I think that we can see that happen. Now, will it? We'll have to wait a few more months, of course, until... The fall comes around and that concludes. We'll look at statistics, style of play, and analytics, you know, what the what the coaches and the beat writers and you know the film study guys, what they think. But it is a possibility. And you can't say that for almost for like 99.9% .9 of running back rooms. You can't say that the top two running backs in the nation happen to be in the same room. But I think it's possible here. Running backs Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards combined for 2,454 rushing yards. They had 25 total rushing touchdowns, and combined they averaged 6.3 yards per carry. That's, you know, on average every time one of both of them ran the football, and of course, you know, if you split up their statistics, Edwards is 7.1, Corum is in the fives, they still get more than half the yardage needed to pick up a first down in one carry. And in two carries, on average, they have picked up a first down. These guys are beasts. They're phenomenal players. They have a lot of potential. They're coached by Mike Hart, who's one of the nation's better running back coaches. The Wolverines totaled 41 rush touchdowns in 2022. And they will be loaded with experience and talent at running back, QB, O-line, and tight end. And those are like, you know, the positions where when it comes to running, especially running up the middle, which Michigan loves to do, maybe they go outside a little bit, but they don't really always test the perimeter. They like pounding it through the teeth of the defense. Those are the positions that matter the most. And Michigan brings in three O-linemen from the portal. Michigan 
is going to lose Ryan Hayes, Alualu Atimi, but Trente Jones, Carson Barnhart, Zach Zinter, Trevor Keegan, they all have extra years of eligibility. Giovanni El Hadi got some snaps this season at guard and he did very well. At tight end, Luke schoonmaker has gone, but Colston Loveland is returning. He was a true freshman who played outstanding. A.J. Barner from Indiana is transferring in at tight end. You obviously have J.J. McCarthy returning at quarterback. Should be among one of the nation's best quarterbacks, though I don't think he will be at that elite level. Won't be at that Heisman level like Drake May, Caleb Williams, Michael Penix will be, for example. Those are three QBs who will definitely next year be better than J.J. McCarthy. In his backup, Davis Warren is returning. Alex Orgy, a freshman who has a you know unique set of a unique set of skills at scrambling. Maybe he could be used in some run situations with Michigan's powerful O line. And obviously Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards return. Kalel Mullings, CJ Stokes, Tavier Dunlap, all those guys, for now, because the portal still exists, are returning. And the portal is also, it not just exists, but it is still very well open. Michigan could have the nation's two best running backs, but only time will tell, and they have a lot of external competition. A lot of it. I think that Corum next year will be the nation's best running back. There's a very good chance that Donovan Edwards could be the number two running back, or maybe he does pass Corum and becomes the number one running back. But remember, Braylon Allen's coming back. Will Shipley. Now that that's a name to look out for right there is Will Shipley at Clemson. Nicholas Singleton. That's an even bigger name to look out for, I think. You know, Nicholas Singleton and Will Shipley, big names to look out for. Um, Bucky Irving from Oregon, name to look after. Devin Neal at Kansas. Um, Roman Hemby at Maryland. Maryland returns a surprising amount at O-line. They bring in transfers at O-line, and Roman Hemby is only going to, he's only going to get better, honestly. Uh, Chase McClellan at Alabama, he showed flashes this year. He's going to be Alabama's, from my knowledge, he is going to be their number one running back because I am completely confident that Jameer Gibbs is gone. And that, I mean, look, Alabama running backs have been historically great. McClellan and Gibbs this year were one of the nation's best running back duos. Gibbs especially, very explosive, great receiving back. Um, Quinshon Judkins, that's another name to look out for. I think true freshman or redshirt freshman at Ole Miss. He had 1,567 rushing errors. There's a lot of external competition. There are also names that I haven't even mentioned. There are probably some names that we aren't even thinking of that will burst onto the open scene and be among the nation's best at any position. That, that happens every year. So can these two be the best running backs in the nation? Absolutely. Will it happen? I'm not going to predict probably. I likely won't predict that it happens until I see it. But this rushing attack is going to be deadly. When you return two of your starting running backs, a lot of your O-line, your quarterback, this offense is set up for success. This offense is set to improve from 2022 in the same way that 2022 improved from 2021. And when you look at statistics... The most important one, obviously, being points scored per game and points allowed per game. Michigan improved in both scoring offense and scoring defense. The most drastic improvement, though, is scoring offense. And I think that, once again, will be the case. Once again, Michigan's schedule next year is relatively light. That'll give time to work out any potential issues, any potential injuries, any schematic errors, any positional errors, that'll all be worked out in a very easy, once again, cupcake non-conference schedule. And with the offensive line that Michigan has, Sharon Moore is possibly the best offensive line coach in the country with what he's able to develop with very often the three stars at the position or the occasional four star there as well. With that O-line, the tight ends, J.J. McCarthy and his threat, 
you know, his his running threat that he does have, and then Corum and Edwards, who's going to be able to challenge this this run game? Who is? I mean, I I, I akin this Michigan's run game, this running back game might be at the same level as Ohio State's passing game. Honest to goodness. I mean, who who can stop Marvin Harrison Jr.? Who can stop Julian Fleming and Emeka Egbuka? Who can stop all three of them on the field? You can't. The best you can do is limit them. Or you let them play their A game, but then you shut down Ohio State's run game. You make them one-dimensional. Give you some extra positions and some more control of the game. For Michigan and their offense, it's probably the same thing. You can't stop Corm and Edwards. But what you can do is like what TCU did. Yeah, they limited Michigan's run game to a certain degree. They had tons of TFLs, but the main thing was they were able to get pressure on J.J. McCarthy, and they were able to pick him off for six, two times. So these are weapons on offense. They truly are weapons on offense. And you, I'm going to link articles down below for the roster projection from mgofish.com and our lads. And finally, to end this video off, I want to read an article by mazenbrew.com talking about Blake Corm's return for the 2023 season. Announced on the Rich Eisen Show Monday afternoon, Michigan Wolverines running back Blake Corum is foregoing the NFL draft and is returning to Ann Arbor for the 2023 season. The soon-to-be senior played an integral part in Michigan's offense this past season. He ranked up 1,463 rushing yards, 18 touchdowns to go along with 11 receptions for 80 yards and a touchdown. Corum won a few of Michigan's postseason awards, including Team MVP and the Hardest Working Player, but he didn't win the Heisman Trophy, in large part due to a knee injury sustained in the game against Illinois. He revealed in the Rich Eisen show he suffered a hyperextended knee, torn meniscus, and sprained MCL. Ouch. He had to put up big numbers against Ohio State and in the Big Ten Championship against Purdue. He would have likely had a solid shot at the Heisman if he did so, but he didn't. It was an unfortunate ending to a fabulous season, but he will have another shot at the Heisman and more, potentially a national title, in 2023. Michigan will once again have one of the best one-two punches. Remove one of. It will be the best one-two punch at the running back position, not only in the Big Ten, but in all of college football next season with Corum and Donovan Edwards, who nearly ran for 1,000 yards this past season as well. The Wolverines will also have Running back C.J. Stokes, who's a sophomore, converted linebacker Kalo Mullings as significant con contributors at the running back room to go along with incoming freshman Cole Cabana and Benjamin Hall. Corum isn't the first Wolverine to announce he's coming back next season. Fifth-year senior cornerback Mike Sander still announced he'd be coming back. Chris Jenkins, who put up a quietly good season, is also coming back. D.J. Turner declared last week. Luke Schoonmaker's going, but there's a lot of guys returning, in part because of the one more year NIL fund that was announced Sunday afternoon. Uh, this will sway Corum to stay, and Zach Zinner, Trevor Keegan, and Cornelius Johnson, who have some years of eligibility left, it could perhaps convince them to stick around. Corum's return is obviously a huge news for Michigan. But to end off this video, I do want to say that Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum, I think, is the nation's and the Big Ten's best one-two punch. But I am going to make a video comparing them to Mayan Williams and Travion Henderson and Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen. Because Penn State and Ohio State's running back rooms could contend for the best running back room in college football. Make no mistake about it. But I think for now, that, by a mile, does go to Michigan. And they are going to be scary in 2023 with that rushing attack. That's all I have to say for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell, and comment your thoughts down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.